Today, I'm going to be talking about window functions and how they pertain to FFTs. Let's suppose that we have some time series. For simplicity, let's assume that it's a sine wave of frequency f. This is an infinite signal. However, the FFT requires a finite signal, stemming from the fact that we cannot process the signal forever. This puts limitations on the frequencies that can be measured. In addition, it also requires us to assume how the signal behaves outside of the measured interval. The FFT assumes that the signal repeats forever. Suppose we measure this part of the sine wave. To the FFT, the signal looks like that interval repeated forever. Hence, in frequency space, this will be a delta function at the frequency of the sine wave. However, let's say that we sample this chunk instead. Therefore, to the FFT, this will look a little different from the previous signal. The signal will have sharp discontinuities at the endpoints of the signal. To the FFT, the time series will look like this. Notice the discontinuity in the time series, as viewed by the FFT. In frequency domain, discontinuities cause broad frequency structure. In this case, we will see a peak at the frequency of the sine wave, but we will also see a broader structure in nearby spectral channels. It will look like this. In frequency space, this time series will have a peak at the frequency of the sine wave that we sampled, but because of the discontinuity at the edges, it will have this extended frequency structure going out to all frequencies. This is spectral leakage. It occurs whenever there's a sharp discontinuity in the sampled signal, either at the endpoints or not. What's happening is that power is being spread through all frequency channels because of this discontinuity. Now you may ask if there's a way to get around this and get rid of the leakage. Yes and no. This is where window functions come in. Window functions can minimize the spectral leakage, but they can't get rid of it completely. There's no way to get rid of spectral leakage completely. So what exactly is a window function? Let's first look at the Fourier transform of a time series. Implicitly, in this formula, we are multiplying our time series by 1 everywhere in the sampled interval and 0 outside of that sampled interval. But this doesn't have to be the case. We can just as easily multiply by some other function, w of t. This function, w of t, is the window function. By the convolution theorem, this is equal to the convolution of the Fourier transform of the time signal and the window signal, where hat represents the Fourier transform of the signal. The Fourier transform of the window function is sometimes called the convolution kernel. In the traditional FFT, the window function, W of t, is a rectangular window function and is equal to 1 everywhere in the sampled interval and 0 outside. The Fourier transform of this rectangular window function is a sinc function in frequency domain. Therefore, in the regular FFT, we are convolving our spectra with the sinc function and effectively spreading power across the band. Let's go back to our example above, our time series that has a sharp discontinuity at the edges of our sampled signal, which looked like this. To reduce spectral leakage, we want to minimize the discontinuity at the edges. Therefore, we can multiply by a window function that tapers off the edges of our time sample to zero. Schematically, this would look like this. Notice that the ends are smooth out to zero, or very close to it, and hence the discontinuity is greatly reduced. There are many windowing functions you can choose from to do this. Two of the most popular ones include the Hamming window and the Hanning window. The Hamming window looks like this. On the left is the window in the time domain. On the right is the frequency response of the window. The frequency response gives one measure of the window's characteristics, the side lobe. The side lobe indicates the effect the window has on neighboring channels of the FFT. In the case of a Hamming window, the first side lobe is about minus 42 dB down from the central lobe. This means that the leaked power from the central frequency in question to the neighboring channel is minus 42 dB. In general, lower side lobes reduce leakage, but increase the bandwidth of the main lobe. The fastest roll-off for a window occurs with the rectangular window function. Every other function widens the central lobe, maybe even into two spectral bins but reduces leaked power in neighboring bins. Now, when we use a windowing function, we are effectively throwing away some information about the time series we have. In effect, we are reducing noise and signal in our sample. 
because we're tapering off at the end. We're basically throwing away some information about our signal. Depending on the type of signal we want to measure, we want to either minimize the noise or the signal. To detect a narrow band signal, we would like to use a narrow bandwidth windowing function. The noise performance of the window function can be measured by the noise equivalent bandwidth. Suppose our window looks like this over some bandwidth B. The noise equivalent bandwidth is the width of a rectangular filter which would accumulate the same noise power as the window function. Note that this is always going to be smaller than the bandwidth the window function covers. Specifically, the noise equivalent bandwidth is defined as the bandwidth of the window function over the equivalent bandwidth of the rectangular window function that contains the same amount of noise. So, where B is the bandwidth of the window function and B EQ is the equivalent bandwidth of the rectangular window function. There is also a related concept of the signal equivalent bandwidth, which is the same measure as the noise equivalent bandwidth but for a signal. In this case, it is defined as a bandwidth of equal signal as in the rectangular function. By the radiometer equation, it follows that the signal equivalent bandwidth is equal to the square root of the noise equivalent bandwidth. The radiometer equation says that TRMS equals T over the square root of bandwidth, proportional to the two. And that's how we get this equation. Depending on what you're looking for in your time series, you want to choose a window function that has a different noise equivalent bandwidth or a signal equivalent bandwidth. It's all specific to your needs. Finally, I want to note that whenever you use a window function, you're de decreasing your signal to noise ratio. That is, your signal is being degraded because you're throwing away some information at the edges over here. That is, your signal is being degraded. In return, however, you're getting less spectral leakage. This is a trade-off you have to deal with when using window functions, and depending on what your situation is, you may not want to use a window function. Thanks.